If you're looking to start a YouTube automation business, not knowing the following 10 terms can cost you a lot of money. If you don't know who I am, my name is Razvan Parashiv and I made my first million dollars at the age of 19 through YouTube automation and I learned those terms as I went. So I want to give you a practical guide to learn those terms and you know them off the bat so you don't make the mistakes that I made. But if you're just getting started, you just found out about the business model or you want to make sure that you have everything dialed in from the beginning, then this is for you and let's begin. The number one term that I want to talk about is probably the most important and a lot of people ask about it it's copyright this is a major one since with faceless youtube channels or with youtube automation channels we basically don't create the content ourselves it's not a hundred percent original content it's not us sitting in front of the camera recording the content or going up there and capturing the content with the cameras ourselves so in one way or another we are still using somebody else's footage but there's one smart way to go about it and there's another way which is not so smart this can make or break your channel so i would definitely pay attention i want to read a definition that youtube gives us for copyright which states that creators should not upload videos they didn't make or use content in their videos that someone else owns the copyright to such as music tracks snippets or copyrighted programs or videos made by other users without necessary authorizations what that means is that you cannot just take somebody else's work rip it off and slam me on your youtube channel with the goal of making money this rule right here is the reason why in my opinion compilation channels meditation channels or motivation channels are not the smart way to go about faceless youtube channels because they're on the verge of violating this rule and as i said it can really make or break your channel now when i'm saying make or break your channel what i mean is this there are two ways that copyright can affect you and your channel. Number one is you can get a copyright claim or number two is you can get a copyright strike. In most cases, claims are not that bad. Most likely, you will not be able to monetize that video or maybe play segments of the video. And the other part, the person who owns the copyright for the video or for the song, whatever it is, will make all the money. On the other side, if you get a strike, then it's pretty bad as there are a couple of restrictions that come with it. And if you manage to get three strikes, your channel will be shut down. There are a bunch more technical details that you can know about these terms, but the best way to go about it is this. One, you can get an experienced video editor if you want to delegate and outsource the content that already knows those laws and already knows how to edit videos in a way that makes them not violate any copyright rules and that will save you all the hassle. However, if you want to make the content yourself and even if you want to choose to outsource, I highly, highly recommend you take an hour, two, maybe three, four hours to go to the entire YouTube guidelines to become a little bit more familiar with the entirety of the definitions and you have at least an idea in the back of your mind on how to best proceed about this. Now, the second term that I want to mention and I'm going to bundle two terms together here are fair use and creative commons. As YouTube describes it, fair use is a legal doctrine that says use of copyright protected material under certain circumstances is allowed without permission from the copyright holder. In simple terms, there are some exceptions in which you can use copyrighted material without the permission of the owner. But in my opinion, I wouldn't go in that area because it can be very very subjective and you need to be very very good at knowing all those rules i wouldn't try to push the limits if you're not sure or if your editor is not sure just tell them don't use it just keep it very friendly because you don't want to deal with restrictions that can again cost you a lot of money creative comments has a pretty similar outcome which is why i decided to bottle them together once again as per their definition creative common licenses give a standard way for content creators to grant someone else permission to use their work if you make an original video on youtube for example this one that you're watching right now now, you can give other people the license to use clips from it without asking you for permission. And you can go on YouTube and you can look for videos that have that feature turned on, meaning those are YouTubers or content creators or channels, faceless channels can be, that said, hey, the content that I made right here, other people can repurpose and reuse to make their videos, not just copy, paste, upload, and make money with it at their own will without asking for permission. The way I've best navigated those rules and the way I recommend you do it out there, especially if you want to start a YouTube automation business, is to find an experienced video editor and an experienced scriptwriter maybe as well that has edited mobile videos for mobile channels like yours in the past so that they know exactly what's allowed to post, what's not allowed to post. Now, I recommend that you do your minimum due diligence and you read the YouTube terms of service and guidelines at least maybe once a quarter six months maybe maybe 12 months or at least once there's uh, a major update you might want to go through them because they might change things they might have things i can tell you that in the last three years that i've been running youtube automation channels and faceless youtube channels i haven't had any major problems with copyright creative commons fair use or any of that sort because i just used common sense and got experienced people 
um, who knew how that stuff works. Now, let's talk a little bit more about performance metrics. And the first one that I want to talk about is impressions. I think most of you kind of understand what impressions are, but I will do it in a chronological way that allows you to see the importance of impressions. To keep it simple, the number of impressions is just the number of times your thumbnails were shown to viewers on YouTube. This doesn't include external views or maybe embeds where your video has been put, but how many times people have seen the thumbnails of your videos on the platform. The reason I consider impressions crucial, views are coming from impressions. We'll see in, in about a moment when I do this chronological path, but that you don't have much control over the number of impressions, just like you don't really have much control over the number of views that you can get directly saying, oh, I wanna get more views, okay, do this. Apart from, you just need to create good quality content that people want to see. There are no specific tricks or gimmicks or positioning things that you can do to directly improve or directly guide or coordinate the number of impressions. This is just the YouTube algorithm showing your thumbnails, showing your videos and putting them in front of other people that will further decide to click or not click and therefore watch or not watch. I will look at impressions. I look at them from time to time, not every day, but maybe every week to try to see if YouTube is giving me more or less which kind of acts as the North Star if I'm going in the right direction with my content and with my videos. It's rarely that I've seen people that go as in-depth as starting to worry about impressions and talk about impressions on a daily basis, especially when it comes to faceless YouTube channels. The next term that I want to talk about, it's called CTR, and it stands for click to rate. This is what happens chronologically. First, they see your thumbnail, right? You get an impression. Somebody has seen your thumbnail and the immediate next decision that they need to make is whether they want to click or not click on your thumbnail. And that's what click to rate is. This measures how often viewers watch the video after seeing an impressions. Now, what's important to know is that although in the impressions definition, they're only speaking about thumbnails. When it comes to CTR, so when it comes to deciding whether people are gonna click on the video or are not gonna click on the video, the thumbnail is no longer the only part that matters. Because if you think about how people get seen a video, they see the thumbnail and they also see the title. And they also, between the two, kind of get the idea. So growing your CTR or improving your CTR, you wanna have these two things in mind. How can I get my thumbnails to be better so I can increase my CTR? How can I get my titles to be better so I can increase my CTR? And sometimes it's something that it's not seen, but it can also be the idea behind the video, the niche that you're in, and all these other things that I don't want to bore you with in this video. If impressions are something that I don't look at every day and want to see, hey, is it down, is it low? CTR is definitely something that I want to have top of mind and is one of the most important metrics that you have when it comes to YouTube, or at least the ones that you can control because you can change thumbnails, you can change titles and you can also change the ideas of videos. If you want to have a little bit more control on the performance of your videos, you want to have this metric in mind. Again, very, very important. Now, the next one, which is directly correlated to money, so it's very, very important, it's views. Now, before you click away or skip and say, Graz, we know what a view is, we know what view means, what I think it's important to understand is, once again, where views are chronologically, right? So, follow me here. First, you get an impression, right? People get shown your thumbnail. Then they decide, which gives you the CTR, whether they wanna click and watch that video. And only then, if they've decided to click, the impression converts into views. So from this journey, you can see that the number of views is highly related to the number of impressions that you get in the first place and the CTR performance that you have. If you have a low CTR, you're gonna get lower views. If you have a high CTR, you're gonna get higher views. This ups the importance of CTR once again. I also wanna talk about VPH, which stands for views per hour. This is a little bit more advanced and it's not highly usable, but it's good to look at this metric for once in a while. And it's also good for you to know that it exists and be aware of it. Views per hour shows you how many views that video is getting each and every single hour, which I think is very, very useful, especially if you're doing competitor research. If videos of your competitors are still getting views or are dead, maybe they posted the video a week ago, one month ago, maybe three months ago, this metric, VPH, it allows you to see if that video is still somehow relevant, meaning viewers are still watching it right now as we speak or in the moment that you're watching at it, it can give you a little bit of an idea whether you should make that video or not. Again, it's not something crucial, but I think I would have it on the radar for sure, VPH. Now let's talk about the monetization of views and the terms that I think you should know when it comes to money and how money is being made on the platform 
through AdSense revenue. The first one that we're gonna cover here, it's CPM, which stands for cost per meal or cost per thousand. And YouTube describe it as how much advertisers pay every thousand times your watch page content is viewed with ads. And in simple, this is how much money advertisers are paying YouTube, the platform, for every 1,000 views that their ads get displayed in front of your viewer. It can go up or down. If 10,000 people see it, it can also change, right? And it's not from thousand to thousand, it actually changes every day and it changes pretty much with every single person that watches it because it's a different audience. Therefore, advertisers are paying YouTube different amounts. But this is not really the most important one you should look at when it comes to money. But the next one is, which is called RPM, which stands for revenue per meal, AKA revenue per thousand. Revenue per thousand is pretty similar to cost per thousand, but this one shows how much money you as the creator get to keep for every 1000 views that your video gets and advertisers uh, are putting money on. And to give you the best example for one of my most popular videos, the full 57 minute tutorial on how to start YouTube automation yourself, you can see right here that my CPM, meaning how much advertisers are paying for that video is $41.35. But my piece of the pie, AKA the RPM is only $16.80. One cents. That's because YouTube has a revenue share and not all of those views were monetizable. So I think it's important that you look at both those metrics. Both CPM and RPM are important metrics to know. But once again, just like in the case of impressions, you can't really do much about it. You can change the niche, you can change the audience, but those are very big, maybe once in a lifetime of a channel, decisions that you make. And on a day-to-day -day basis, you don't really have direct control over those. But I believe we have a lot of control, a lot of direct control over the next one, which is AVD or average view duration. Now, it's very hard for me to isolate and say that one of those terms is the most important term or the most important metric that you should know and be aware of, but this is definitely among the top. This is one of the most important, especially because you have a lot of control over. So AVD, average view duration, is the total watch time of your video divided by the total number of video plays, including replays, as per YouTube's official definition. But how I think of it is, for how long have people watched my video on average? What's the average time that a person who clicked on this video watched the video for? If you have a 10 minute video and 10 people watch it, on average, for how long have they watched it? Is it one minute, is it two minutes, is it three minutes? Some people might have watched the entire video for 10 minutes and some people might have watched it for five. Some people might have watched it for three. But if you combine them all, on average, what does that look like? And then to make it a little bit more clear, YouTube also gives us the average percentage viewed, which is a percentage of the total video that your audience has watched. So for one of the most popular videos that I have on this channel, the 57 minute tutorial, the video is 57 and 11 minutes long, right? And as of right now, my average duration is seven minutes and 28 seconds, which comes down to be about 13.1%. Now what I learned, and it's very important for you to be aware of when you hear people speaking, oh, you need to get 30%, 40%, 50% average percentage viewed. It depends on the length of the video because although this video only has 13% average percentage viewed, it has a pretty high average duration of seven minutes and a half. And you can see that it got over 100,000 views in a niche where getting millions of views is not as often. Average duration is a very important metric. You should be aware of it. You should measure it on a daily basis and you should have it as high as possible. The longer people watch your videos, the better. And you want to monitor it each and every single day with each, each of your videos to try and see where are people dropping off, where are people stop watching your videos to try and improve that, improve your videos and grow the metric. The last metric that we have on today's list, the 10 method is something that has recently been introduced, but it really, really helps me with my methods of doing research, which is called the outlier score. I like VidIQ's definition for this, which is the outlier score allows you to learn if a video is outperforming the channel's average. Let's say you have a channel and you upload three videos that each get 100 views, which is very hard to do, by the way. Again, you don't have much control of the views stopping at 100. Your channel average number of views per video is 100 views. If you post the fourth video that gets 500 views, that, that video now has a 5x outlier score. Now, the reason why I included this metric on today's list is because it quickly became a very easy metric for me to look at when doing competitor research, and it tremendously helps me deciding which videos I wanna model, which videos I wanna take inspiration from, and which videos I wanna avoid. Those are just 10 of the ones that I look at. Those are the most important by frequency, meaning those are the ones that I look at the most frequent, apart from the money and the financials and whatnot. And they're not the only ones by any means. But in the end, as I always say, don't get fancy, don't get cute. The work needs doing. Good luck to you.